Hi friends. Okay. So, uh, I'm a little nervous to do this live. I'm not going to lie. Like I've been sitting here piddling around for the last 10 minutes, <laughs> like sweating my pits out. Cause, um, I wanted to come live, um, and accept my challenge from church today. So I go to Plum Creek Church, if you guys are familiar at all with, um, hey Celine, um, if you guys are familiar at all with the church, um, our main pastor is Pastor Doug, and I was at church today, and it's been, it's been a hot minute since I've been, just because I um, have been super busy, and, but um, I catch up on all of the sermons on YouTube, so you can find my church, just Plum Creek Church on YouTube, um, Hey, thanks, Celine. Appreciate it. Like that glitter I got going on today? <laughs> Super fun. Um, but anyways, so I went to church today, um, and basically it was a really, really good sermon today. And do you ever go to church and feel like they are literally talking to you? Like, I felt like my pastor, Pastor Doug, was sitting on my shoulder all all week this week, <laughs> like living my life with me, and then came to church and was like, "Girl, listen." So, um, and it was it was really interesting. So, it'll, I'm going to go over a couple of things. It's all going to tie together. So, um, basically, the challenge at church today was to talk to people about your story. And oh, thanks, Mariana. Uh, and talk to people about your story and why you go to church or why you seek spirituality in some form. And so I was like, Doug, I got you. I can do better than that. I can go live on my Facebook and talk to more than one person. So um, I got you. So challenge accepted and I'm going to do it. So um, a little bit background story on myself so that you guys kind of know where I'm coming from because um, a lot of us are friends on Facebook, but you know, um, a lot of people don't know sort of your background story and your life, if you will. So my life, uh, I had a pretty rough childhood growing up. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> so I had an abusive, physically abusive mother, um, not necessarily all her fault. She had a lot of mental health problems. Um, and then I was um, sexually assaulted by her boyfriend at a very young age. Um, I had several moms walk out on my life thereafter. Um, my dad has always kind of been the constant in my life. And when I was younger, um, we went to church but we weren't really, I wouldn't consider our, us like a church or God-like family, if you will. So we went to church and I went to Sunday school, but, and I knew who Jesus was, but like, I didn't know that the Bible was a real, you know, okay. So controversy aside, but I always thought that the Bible was just kind of like this made up thing that people threw together. I didn't realize that it was like a story, like a true story front to back. Like you could read it like a regular book. <laughs> I didn't know this until much later in life. Like, so my family would go to church, but we never talked about religion in the household. Like we didn't pray together. We didn't talk about it in the house. There wasn't like any type of, you know, spirituality, if you will, within our household. Um, and so I grew up around the church, but not spirituality, which I think is, there's a big difference between the two. And so um, as I got older and uh, went off to college, and just, so I decided to become a nurse um, because I felt a strong passion and a really strong calling to help other people and to serve. Um, and regardless of how you want to tie that into faith or not, it's just sort of what I felt from a very young age. And so I went off to college and all of a sudden, a lot of issues that I dealt with in my childhood started to arise. So in college, I dealt a lot with, um, bad relationships, um, drugs and alcohol, 
Um, you know, just a lot of those things trying to emotionally deal with a lot of the damage that happened to me that I had never really dealt with. So I ended up doing a ton of counseling, uh, which I highly recommend to anybody, <laughs> regardless of what your background is or your story or anything. I think it, counseling on any level is always a good thing to kind of check in with from time to time. Um, so I did a lot of counseling and dealt with a lot of my emotional issues and things like that and met my husband currently, who's like the most amazing man ever and became an ER nurse and got my dream job and basically continued to work doing that for like the next 12 years. So fast forward and here I am in the ER and living a life that sh most people would like dream of. And I allegedly, you know, have my dream job, right? Like I always wanted to be an ER nurse, a trauma nurse. I'm doing it. It's the most amazing thing ever. But then all of a sudden at about 10 years, I really, I, my husband and I both really, me especially, I just, I hit this really big emotional roadblock in my life. And I really want to especially do this for all of my healthcare worker friends. If you're a nurse, a tech, a doctor, whatever, um, we all, if you're a cop, especially paramedics, like we all sort of deal with these issues, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and um, really seeing the ugly side of life. And after a decade of really seeing the ugly in the world, I all of a sudden was just, I was so emotionally tapped out, you guys. Like, I was so sad that I had gotten to a point in my career where I was just burnt out. Emotional fatigue is real. Um, compassion fatigue is a real thing. And they're really starting to diagnose this within the healthcare community. And it's a real thing. So um, our neighbors who live across the street from us, who are uh, very active members in our church, hey, Jessica, hey, Penny, um, are very active members at Plum Creek Church and have been for a long time. Uh, we ended up having dinner with them one night and um, they were like, you guys should really come to church with us. And my husband and I were like, yeah, um, that's not really our jam. Like, we have a really hard time with that. And they were like, why? And my husband and I were just basically like, uh, because if you had seen half the things we have seen, like, you would really struggle with your faith in God or any powers that be or anything of the above. And so they're like, listen, just give it a chance. Come one time. If you hate it, you never have to come again. And we're like, okay, fine. So my husband and I went one time, <laughs> met Pastor Doug, and just absolutely felt like he spoke to our hearts. And he is such a relatable person. And like we were both that day, like really choked up and really emotional at church and we were like, what is going on right now? And I think a big part of it was that we were really missing a large part of emotional connectedness and soul in our lives. So I've been reading this. So to tie in all of this, a couple of books that I've read or in the process of reading, one a book that I read recently that really changed my life was called To Heaven and Back. And it's written by an orthopedic surgeon who basically dies and goes to heaven. So lives in Wyoming. Um, and this book, like I literally just got chills, you guys, talking about this. So if you're in healthcare, I really recommend, hey, Allie, I really recommend that you guys read that book or get the audible version of it to heaven and back. Um, that book changed my life. And because I think that... As healthcare providers and being in a field of science, um, we are so taught to believe if you can't explain it by, like everything can be explained by mathematic formulation, science, whatever. But being a nurse for as long as I have been, I have seen a lot of things, you guys, that could not be explained at all. I have seen, I've seen miracles. I have seen people be pronounced dead and wake up. I have seen, 
Yeah, like I've seen some pretty amazing things. And I've been witness to a lot of people dying. And some of it sometimes very abrupt and sometimes not. And I can tell you that there is a very distinct moment. And there, I have had some very um, interpersonal moments that I can't explain. Of spiritual moments, of feeling, subconscious thought um, that had been shared amongst others when we did not verbally share anything that was going on in the room. So although in my throughout my entire career and I've experienced these things, I never saw it out going back to church. And I think that there was this huge emotional disconnect for me. And I think that part of it was after seeing so many horrible things happen to people and seeing all these tragedies and tragic in my life with being a nurse, I had a really hard time emotionally reconciling between those two things. And reading that book, To Heaven and Back, um, really helped me understand a lot more um, and how that all ties in together. And going back to church and talking with some of the pastors and praying with some of them and really getting back to those roots has really brought like a new level of understanding and wholeness and peace to my life that I haven't had in a really long time. And so part of what Pastor Doug was talking about today was living a life of, um, oh God, what was the word that he used? Um, not mediocrity, lackadaisicalness. Living a life of lackadaisy. And part of that ties into just, especially with teenagers nowadays, how teenagers just have this overwhelming feeling of meh, just, how are, how are you today? Meh. How's school? Meh. Or even adults. How's work? Meh. I mean, it's just, it's just this like lackadaisical feeling of just meh. Because people are missing passion in their lives. They're missing connectedness. They're missing soul. They're missing the vibrance that spirituality really brings to your life. And I was missing it. I know, I know I was missing it. And now that I have it back in my life, it has made a really big difference to me. Um, and you know, and guys, I'm not perfect. Okay. I still drop the F bomb all the time and I probably drink a little too much wine and like, I'm not perfect by any means, but I will tell you one thing that I've, that I've done since I start started going back to church. One of the reasons that I wear my cross on my chest is because every morning that I wake up, okay, or at least I try, I'd say I'm pretty good at this. I do it about 90% of the time. My husband's always like, why are you, what are you doing laying in bed? And I'm like, don't talk to me. I'm having my quiet time because I lay in bed every morning that I wake up and I hold this and I talk to God and I just thank him every day. I don't ask for anything. Um, because I have an incredibly blessed life and I just sit there and I thank him for everything that he has given me in my life. My family's healthy. I'm healthy. My parents are healthy. I have a job and a roof over my head. I live in a country where I don't have to worry about murder every day. Um, you know, there, there's just, there's so many things to be thankful for every day of your life. And I try to start my morning every day by holding this and just thanking him and thanking him for, and thanking my neighbors, Ben and Stacy, for bringing me back to the church and bringing spirituality back into my life. And listen, you don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be, you don't have to even have an organized religion. Okay. One of my favorite books that I'm reading right now is called, um, a religion of one's own by Thomas More, who is a retired, retired Buddhist of 20 years 
who has studied basically every religion that is out there. Um, he's studied, you know, Buddhism, um, Judaism, the Quran, Muslimism, um, it all. He studied it all. And he's trying to bring spirituality and faith into the 21st century and bring it out of the brick and mortar and into people's homes and into your heart. And it has been a really good book so far. So that's another one that I really recommend that you check out. Um, because you don't have to be part of an organized religion to have soul and faith and spirituality in your life. So don't think that it has to be that. Um, but it can definitely change your life. So if you're one of my healthcare friends and you are really suffering from compassion fatigue, because it is a real, real thing, you guys, it really is. Um, if you're suffering from compassion fatigue, I really recommend that you get plugged in with counseling, whether that be finding spirituality again in some form that works for you, whether that's meditation, whether that's going back to church, whether that's whatever that looks like for you. Um, because Plum Creek Church has changed my life and it's changed my husband's life. And it has brought us closer together and has brought um, peace, a lot of peace to me. And, you know, I changed jobs. I got out of the ER, a job that I thought that I would love and be in for the rest of my life. And you know what? I just, I needed a break. And I'm in a department now where I really get to connect with my patients every day. And I take care of some of the most lovely people and I get time to actually sit down with them and actually talk to them and have a lot of personal moments with them. Because let me tell you something, guys. Nobody gets out alive. Hey, Shelly. Hey, boo. Nobody makes it out of this world alive. Okay. The end game is all the same for us all. And I want you to live your best life. And whatever that looks like for you. But I think that so many people nowadays are so disconnected and so caught up in social media and just this instant gratification of life and of things and of substance. And when we're really missing out on the things that really matter in life and the things that are really important, which is you know, family, soul, spirituality, and connecting on a deep emotional level with the things around us. Like whether that be, you know, the mountains. For me, for me, it's the mountains. When I go out into the nature, when I go skiing in the wintertime, I go hiking in the summertime, whatever, for me, it's the outdoors. And I feel deeply connected on a deep spiritual level with something greater than myself. And I and I sit and I just sit in awe and amazement of our universe and everything that is in it and how we've all come to be here. So I if you don't have a place where you feel that and you feel like you connect to something on a deep deep level like that, then I really recommend that you tap in with something that gets you there um, because it can change your life. So that's that's my challenge, Doug. So Pastor Doug, that's my challenge. That's my story. That is why I go to Plum Creek Church. Um, I love the family there. I love the mission. I love the outreach that they do. Um, and I love that they are not a church. That's lackadaisical. Um, you know, they have purpose. They have community driven purpose. And that's one of the reasons why I really love them. So anyways, I love you guys. If you have any questions about anything, message me. I'm an open book. Um, you know, if you need help finding counselors or a church to plug into or whatever that is for you, um, you know, message me because I know what it feels like to be emotionally tapped out and drained and lost in, in the nursing profession. I've been there. 
So um, life is too short to feel that way. And I mean that. So anyways, that's that's my little pedestal. Um, I love you guys. And if you have any questions about any of those books, message me. I'd be more than happy to send them along to you. Um, and I hope you all have a fabulous Sunday. And thank you for tuning in.